When you hear the word quad, I'm sure there's one thing that you come to expect. But as fun as four-wheelers are... Oh, yeah, we kind of blew our budget in the last couple episodes. This is a lawnmower. Uh, but regardless, today we're going to be talking about the world of encoders and one of my favorite quad words. What is quadrature and what is it used for? Okay, enough silliness. First, a quick refresher on how optical encoders work. Hit the replay. Let's take a closer look at one of our encoders. This is our E5. The module has an LED on one side and a photo sensor on the other. The disc has a series of lines on it. These lines block the LED's light from reaching the photo sensor and the transparent spaces let light through. This alternating pattern of light and dark is how the encoder reports position information back to the mechanical system. Okay, this is all well and good for a general explanation, but it's a bit oversimplified, and with this setup, you're only gonna be able to track motion in one direction. So let's take a second look at how our optical encoders actually work. With our encoders, the LED light shines through a lens, which focuses the light into a column. That column hits a chip on the other side of the disc with a photo detector area on it. Some parts of the detector area are assigned to channel A and others are assigned to channel B. The sensors are aligned in such a way that channel B is offset a quarter of an electrical cycle from channel A. Notice in this case, channel A goes up to five volts first, then channel B follows shortly after. We can tell the direction of motion based on which channel goes to five volts first. In this case, if A rises before B, we know the disc is spinning in a clockwise rotation. If we switch the rotation to counterclockwise, we can see that now B goes high before A. The other advantage of quadrature is we can use the offset waveforms to effectively read each edge of line on the encoder disc. The encoder disc may only have 100 lines on it, but we can process the signal to get 200 or 400 pulses. Here's how. If you only count each rising edge in channel A, you get one pulse per cycle. And remember, each cycle corresponds to a line and then space between lines passing between the LED and photo sensor. So the pulse count is equal to the native resolution of the disc. If we count the rising and falling edges of all pulses in channel A, we get two pulses per cycle. This doubles the native resolution. If we count both A and B channels this way, then we get four pulses per cycle or quadruple the native resolution. And that's why we call it quadrature. So quadrature comes in handy if you want to track the direction of motion or get more precise information out of your encoder. If you have more questions, you can always check out more videos of our Encoders 101 series by subscribing. I feel the need for speed. Ah, there we go, there we go.